check in number three. Um, actually starting my mass this week. You can see in the check-in where my body comp is at right now. Um, overall weight ended up dropping as I alluded to in the last video. Uh, we actually cut my protein by about five grams. I think I was still holding on to a little bit of weight from the Peru trip. So weight dropped down, not much. Uh, averaged 176 this week. I think it was 176.6 last week, but I think slight improvements in body composition. So mass actually officially begins now. Uh, just got my new macros assigned from my coach. Hello. Uh, so right now my macros are going to be 335 grams of carbs, 175 grams of protein, and 57 grams of fat. Um, always still targeting the 30 grams of fiber as well. We'll see where my body weight goes. I'm expecting it will go up a little bit. Uh, this week was a little bit all over the place anyway in terms of body weight. I went as high as 177 and a half and as low as 174. I think it was Thursday to Friday. I went from 174 all the way up to 177. So um, it's pretty normal to see weight spikes like that. Like that's three pounds overnight. Uh, not a reason to freak out. A lot of variables come into how your weight is going to be the, the day or a couple days after sodium intake, stress levels, sleep, recovery, training, all of those are big factors in what your weight's going to do. So, I mean, when we're looking at our clients and assessing how they're doing in terms of scale weight and body composition, uh, body composition is the most important, but scale weight's a, a big indicator. Um, the spikes are not something that we take action on. You're going to have days where you're high days where you're low. We look at average over the course of a week that will give us a better trend over the course of, you know, however many months you're doing the program, however many years you're doing the program. And it's a more reasonable baseline rather than taking into consideration every single day where you're going to have weight spikes if you eat out or if you track something incorrectly or if you're traveling, uh, if you're stressed at work, one night you didn't sleep. So for this week, I definitely went up and down, um, probably for a couple of reasons. One, um, I'm lactose i'm trying to do this lactose free i had a couple failures this week not because i consumed milk or anything like that but um we actually had lunch brought into my office and my biggest weakness for food is like fried chicken um i don't eat a lot of deep fried food i don't eat a lot of fast food but ended up eating a few pieces um at my office and weight spiked the day after uh and i've completely forgot that buttermilk fried chicken is has lactose in it. So buttermilk has dairy. Uh, I think I also had a breakfast that might've been cooked in butter. So not a ton of dairy, but it's still something that affected my weight. There were some spikes. Um, also could have been work, normal work stress uh, and lack of sleep. Our upstairs neighbors are, uh, their kids like dive bomb off of the couch, play basketball apparently at like 3 a.m. Uh, so, I don't sleep a whole lot consistently uh, because of our upstairs neighbors. Um, if there's any chance that they're watching this video, your kid should be asleep at 3 a.m. Be more considerate, please. Um, so went over new macros. You, you guys saw the body comp updates. Uh, that's kind of where we're at in terms of lactose free. You're going to continue to try and do this lactose free. I think it's got a better effect on just my diet in general. Um, I tend to go for less sweets at the end of the night uh, to save macros up. I'm eating more vegetables and more whole nutrient dense foods. Um, a lot less whey protein, a lot less yogurt in general. And so far it's been going pretty well. We'll see how it goes as I get further into the mass, uh, especially as it comes to body comp. One of the things I did want to talk about, we, we did eat out this week. Um, obviously I had lunch brought in from my kind of normal nine to five but we also went to a Rosh Hashanah party. Family events can be big triggers for unhealthy eating um, for a lot of people. There's either a lot of alcohol, a lot of sweets, um, a lot of baked goods usually that it's really hard to avoid because you're being essentially force fed food. And it's really hard to say no when you're around an environment with friends and family um, with a lot of food that you've had growing up. Um, it was a Rosh Hashanah party, so a lot of like traditional food. There's the things that I didn't really grow up eating. Uh, it was gefilte fish, um, or sorry, not gefilte fish, matzo ball soup. Matzo ball soup, uh, kugel 
for those of you who don't know what Kugel is, I still don't really know what it is. But whatever the one we had on Saturday was, I think it was a sweet potato base, was really, really good. And I have no idea what the actual ingredients are. I'm getting a head shake that that's not right from Egg Jesse. noodles. Egg corn noodles. Cornflakes on top. Some sort of, like, cream, milk. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have No, it was dairy-free, I asked. Oh, um, then I don't know what they mix it with, but... It's creamy. It's, it's like it's a fat base. It's like a dessert, but not mac and cheese it is, it's sweet, casserole it's sweet thing. It's really casserole. odd, but it was good. And stuff like that is really hard to track. So we just ask our clients to do our best. That's all we do uh, is it, when you can break it down by individual ingredient, um, try and do that. If you can't, try and do your best estimate. Um, if you're having a vegetable soup and you don't know exactly what's in it, maybe find a minestrone soup that you know is canned that would be similar macros so it's a little bit it's not going to be perfectly accurate but it gives me an idea of what i'm eating um the amounts that i'm eating and you get better with practice over time so i know family events uh if it is a big trigger if you know you're going to be drinking a lot if you know there's going to be a ton of sweets try and fill up earlier with healthier foods beforehand especially protein rich foods uh and have a plan bring something bring something you know you can snack on if that's veggies and dip if that's a healthier option for for like chips and dip, if you want to bring your own dish um, that that you have prepared, that you can know the macros going into it, that's usually a way to come out ahead and, and try and win when you have uh, family events where you're not really 100% in control of what you're eating. Lastly, meal prep for this week. Had an interesting interesting time doing meal prep. Uh, Jesse did most of the the prepping of all the food and veggies earlier in the week. So that makes it really easy on me. Um, I did do a couple things this weekend. Uh, did a really good pulled pork, um, threw in a lot of chili pepper, a lot of cayenne pepper. So it's got a nice kick to it, but that turned out really well. And then Brussels sprouts and bacon, which is the one I'm going to throw up here in the video. This one turned out really well. It's pretty easy. It doesn't take too long to make. And then there's my downfall, which was trying to bake a protein bar thing that I didn't really go based off a recipe, but I definitely uh, filmed the outcome that I'll throw in here. You can see what it turned out like, but it's a little bit of experimentation. You definitely know, hit and miss, and now it was a, <laughs> a miss for sure. In every recipe I post of uh, protein powder, I always say uh, I always say to not over bake the protein powder and that is the reason why it gets super dry it's almost it's like a i'll be the cook and she will be baking because that one did not turn out well yeah i'll still eat it though that's it for the updates till next week we'll see how much weight i put on let you guys know so ran out of storage space on my phone, so a couple of the videos of the meal prep didn't turn out, but I think it's relatively straightforward. The first part, you basically just make bacon. Uh, the only trick is we made a pack of bacon. There were 12 strips in there. So to get the fat for calculating macros, we used half of the strips of bacon and chopped them up in the Brussels sprouts. We actually measured out the fat that was left over in the pan and then used half of that fat half the pack. We're using six slices of the 12 slices of bacon uh, to make sure that we can accurately calculate macros because we're cooking the Brussels sprouts in the bacon. Only real thing to keep in mind uh, the rest of the video is the Brussels sprout prep. So enjoy. And I also lost the video clip of the baked goods that I made, but this was the, this was the outcome. And just to give you guys an idea of how poorly this turned out, I think that sums it up.